Nike and Lululemon are two stocks that are currently underperforming the market. Nike is down 60% from all-time high, reached in November 2021. At the same time, you will see that Lululemon stock crashed too. This can already tell us that they crashed probably for the same reasons, but then Lululemon recovered, but now it's down again by 40%, while Nike just kept crashing. They are currently facing some of the same issues, but there are some issues that are unique to them. Both of these companies today are trading at very low multiples compared to historical averages. And that's why it's important to understand what's happening with these two businesses, whether one or both of them are good investments or not. Let's start with the big one, Nike. Just like any retailer, Nike faced some supply chain issues in the early 2020s. We remember there was a pandemic a few years ago and then followed the pandemic, there were high inflation. There was a lot of disruption in the supply chain, which retailers did not really have so much control on. At the same time, there was a build up of inventory and much of this inventory could not be sold at the price at which they were marked on the balance sheet. So, but both companies were able to solve the issue and that's why the stock price of Lululemon eventually recovered. So what's the issue with Nike duty? They did not get as good as they were. Things started getting worse. The growth of the company slowed down and every quarter Nike is lowering its expectations. They are giving different reasons for this. For example, there's a slowdown in the US economy. Even though officially we have not been in a recession, we had high inflation. It's a period that uh, there's no word for it, but the economy is not doing that well in real life, even though the numbers are showing that it's doing well. But people, what they are buying, what they are selling, this is what matters. And fewer people are willing to spend more money on this stuff made by Nike. And it's just not Nike, it's many other retailers. But what made things worse for Nike is China. They have much of their sales in China. And in China, actually, since 2021, the sales of Nike has been going down. There has been a lot of competition. Many Chinese companies have been coming into the market. And it's not just about the competition. It's also about the fact that the Chinese economy is not growing as fast as it should have been. There are many issues in the Chinese economy right now. So Nike is facing all these issues and they have lowered sales expectations quarter after quarter. And at the same time, earnings expectations quarter after quarter has been going down. This is the same thing that happened last quarter and that's why after the earnings report, the stock price of Nike crashed. But that's short term. Eventually, the US economy, the European economy, the Chinese economy, everything will recover. We should not be expecting that the slowdown will go on for years, for decades. It's not going to happen. And whatever you want, people will be practicing sports, they would be buying apparel, shoes from Nike, even though there is competition in China, let's say for example, but the vast population of China, even if competition is coming, Nike can still increase its sales after everything has recovered. Maybe they just need to have a turnaround and things will be better again. So if you're thinking about the long term, the valuation of the company, you should be thinking about an average where maybe Nike is not growing that fast, but you calculate the intrinsic value based on some average earnings you're taking which is not a bad idea. You can even include a recession or two in your calculations. And you say that, okay, this is the average earnings of Nike that they can produce. But how much am I willing to pay for that? When I do this calculation, I see that Nike is overvalued. Just the fact that it is trading at 20 times earnings today doesn't mean anything. If three years ago, it was trading at 40 times earnings. It was expensive back then. But 20 times earnings is still expensive. For the earnings that Nike is generating, it's not growing that fast. I would expect to pay a lower multiple on that. And it is possible that it crashed to 10 times earnings. Its main competitor worldwide would be Adidas. And a few years ago, uh, Adidas was trading at 10 times earnings. So it is very possible that Nike falls to even five times earnings because you don't know this is the market. There have been many wonderful companies trading at five times earnings. Of course, if it trades at five times earnings, I would be rushing to buy Nike, but not today, not at this price. You can always pay at the current price if you're comparing from historical averages you can say it, it looks undervalued but if it falls further down will you hold will you buy more you have to think about all of this it's not just buying right now and doing nothing if you can wait let's say the stock price keeps falling you can wait 10 years to break even please go ahead and invest in nike but i would rather invest in a company where there is a margin of safety what about lululemon this is a company somewhat similar business to Nike, but also different in some ways to Nike. Why do I say it's different? Because it is more luxurious products. And many would rather compare Lululemon with LVMH, 
instead of Nike. It doesn't really matter in which category you put a company. What matters is the product that they are producing and sending to customers. So it's sportswear, but luxurious sportswear. And the quality is superior compared to Nike. Also the service that they give on these products, for example, if something broke, you can go to the store and have it repaired or exchange it. So you have that lifetime guarantee that you don't really have with Nike products or even Adidas or the competitors. So Lululemon is producing a far superior product. And we know when things like this happen, usually margins are higher, which is true for Lululemon. Being a luxury company has its disadvantages. You're still going to practice sports even in recession, but you would probably if you have never bought Lululemon before, you would probably buy something made by Nike instead of Lululemon because uh, it's less expensive. But if you have already bought the product, maybe you can use it for a lifetime and you don't have to worry about this. So there is a kind of loyalty to this. Speaking about loyalty, one advantage that Lululemon has compared to Nike, Nike has cooperated with many superstars, famous sports people, but Lululemon partnered with influencers. I hate to call them that, but influencers, people who can speak on a camera about uh, the stock market or something else. So they have never partnered with me, but hopefully one day if I invest in the company. Usually this is cheaper for the company and it is more relatable to people today. So in another way, they will have better margins than Nike. So why is the stock down? If inventory issues have been solved, why the stock going down now? It's because of lower US sales and also because much of their sales are from China and everyone is scared to invest in China, to do business in China today. For example, last quarter, we had 3% growth in US sales. Before, that used to be double digits. When I'm saying 3%, that's quarterly growth. That's compared to the same quarter last year. So it's not yearly growth. Yearly growth in the US is still around 10%. So a company which used to grow at 40%, in the US before now is growing at 10% and the market is disappointed in it. But you look at China, you look at Europe, sales are still double digits. Sales in China are still growing over 40%. Of course, at some point there's going to be slowdown, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. People who can afford luxury, they are going to buy it. It's not like Nike where the market has already been saturated and it's nearly impossible for you to grow, Lululemon still has a small market share and they can target people who are willing to pay a premium for quality. In China, in the US, in the US it's fewer people now, in Europe they can still target people and that's why they're investing so much money into opening new stores in Europe, in China and all over the world. They have something called the power of free, which is a vision, a goal of the company to double men's sales, to, to double digital sales, online sales, and also to quadruple international sales. And I believe that over the coming years, they can definitely achieve that. It's something that started a few years ago and it's on the right track. So just comparing these two businesses, it seems that Lululemon might be a better investment long-term because it is still growing, it has room to grow. But what about the numbers, the balance sheet? If they're opening so many stores, maybe they have taken a lot of debt, but this is not the case. This is a company without any debt, except for leases. They don't have any debt on their balance sheet. They have a good cash position, they are buying back shares. All seems great for the company. And they are able to do that because they generate a lot of cash. The returns on invested capital, which I believe is one of the most important metrics for comparing companies is over 40% for Lululemon. They have generated $2 billion in owners' earnings last year, and that's over 4.2 billion US dollars in invested capital. If uh, you disagree with the way I calculate invested capital or returns on invested capital, because I do it differently compared to what you would read in textbook, I will recommend you join the Super Investors Club where I talk about how to value companies. There is a free version one. Of course, there's the paid version and it's not that expensive. Please do check it out. Why is it called a club? Because it is a community. It's not just courses. It's not just about the analysis. It is a community where investors can come, can ask questions, can have discussions about investments, about valuations of companies. What can we say about Lululemon based on its high returns on invested capital? So it needs around 350 million dollars to maintain current operations. That's the depreciation of the company, which we can say for this company, this particular company is the maintenance capex. So 350 million to sustain current operations and the rest of the earnings can go into growth. And that's what exactly they are doing. They are using 
the rest of the earnings of the company to grow the business. And if we look at the rate at which earnings are growing and the rate at which it is being reinvested, it is around the same. This is what makes an efficient company. And this is certainly better than Nike. So even though they are growing, there are many companies which grow, which have to take a lot of debt. This is not the case for this one. Coming back to valuations now, how much are we willing to pay for Lululemon? Usually I discount at something a little higher than the 10 year rate. At some point it reached 5%, I was discounted at 5.5% and I still discount at 5.5%. So we already said $2 billion in owner's earnings last year. So if we discount it at 5.5%, it means multiplying by 18, which gives us a value of $36 billion. This is if we don't count the graph. That's around the market cap of Lululemon today. So in a way, if we ignore the graph, Lululemon is fairly valued. But we cannot ignore the growth. It is a growing company. Now, is it going to grow 10% a year for the next five years? 15% for the next 10 years? It all depends on how much certain you are. And I don't know. Maybe you will use other numbers compared to me. But the logic behind this is that there is a margin of safety. This growth component is the margin of safety. The bigger the margin of safety, the better it is. You should not be investing in a company where the intrinsic value is 36 billion and the market cap today is 34 billion. Maybe you can invest at 18 billion. I'm not talking about Little Lemon here, I'm just giving you an example. The purpose of this channel is not to tell you which stock to buy or not buy, it's to just give you an overview of how to value a company and you go home, you do the fun part, the homework yourself and try to value the company. Because what you're looking for in the market, what I'm looking for are not the same. It is about learning how to deconstruct and then reconstruct the financial statements. Investing is not about just looking at earning multiples. I have invested in companies with PE ratio of one. It was a big mistake. I will recommend you watch this video. Have a nice day and goodbye.